This is Kevin, aka the aka the Canal Cowboy, and this is Spencer, aka Uncle Banks. And we are back for another Savage Florida podcast, podcast number two. Here we go. You know, we waited a whole month between podcasts, so we kind of yeah. need to be more consistent. Yeah, consistency is. Hold on, I'm gonna close this door. Well, you hold on and close that door. Ugh. Oh. Yeah, forgive us if it gets choppy. We got three kids running around out back with fishing poles going crazy. We can't keep them out of there, so. Yeah, so you'll see our eyes going all crazy looking at kids. Chillins. The chillins. Yeah, getting just getting angry. Yeah. Like, why would you go away? I don't even know if we fed them, so I don't know if that's a good idea either. <laughs> <laughs> I fed mine a little while ago, but, like, they want to eat all the time. I don't understand. Like, I want to eat all the time, but them, it's, like, a different level. You feed them, we go out to dinner, and then we get home, and they're like, Daddy, I'm hungry. Well, it's because then they run around and then they blow all that steam and they're like, oh, I'm hungry again. I think and they do it just to be annoying, Yeah. to be whatever. honest. They're all annoying. But now that my daughter's obsessed with fishing, I'm okay with that. Because every five seconds, like, we'll be driving. My daughter's five. We're driving and she's like, oh, look, Daddy, that looks like a good fishing spot. Can we stop? And I'm like, yeah, sure. If you call me, we're stopping, <laughs> we're bro. Stopping. So now me and my daughter are, like, fishing everywhere. I love Dude, it, that man. was like when we took them out the other day in the backyard and it was raining and we're underneath the thing. We're like, oh, we're going to leave in five minutes. And she's like... She's like, no. I don't want to leave. I want to keep fishing. I'm like, sweetheart, we're just going to another spot. She's like, oh. Okay. And they didn't even care it. about the rain. You would think with kids, they'd, you'd start getting rained on, and they're like, eh, eh. no. Well, they didn't care about it because I was holding a you know, 10 foot umbrella. You did have the umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> but they were loving it, man. It was awesome. Oh, boy. And uh, having them throw these baits, too, was pretty funny. Oh, yeah. They were all launching Savage Gear that day. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. No live bait. Got no live bait. Got the kids throwing all artificial. Yeah, all artificial all the time. It's so fun. That's my son. He's like, no, can we get savage? You know what? Nah, we're going to throw savage here because we're savages. So, speaking of that, me and my daughter were on my paddleboard a few days ago. Not the trip you're talking about. We were on my paddleboard, and we were trolling through a pipe. And I got her holding my rod, which is actually the rod that I lost. Guys, I lost a Revo Toro S on a Savage Gear squad rod. If you guys see it, please let me know. Or if you have it, if you have it, please hit me up. I'll throw you. I'll no throw you no like. Foul. I'll throw you a couple bucks. No harm, no foul, no big deal. I just want my For rod real. back. We'll hook you up if you get that rod back. Trust me. But anyway, so we're going through a pipe. I'm facing forward on the paddleboard. She's facing back, and she's holding the rod like this, and she's trolling this exact lure. It was the eight-inch glide swimmer baby bass pattern. And bro, you all you hear because the lure is like 50 yards back. So we're coming out of this long ass pipe, and in the middle of the pipe, you just hear <laughs> like you know when you spook a gator, and the sound a gator makes when you spook them, and they just like it's just water and emptiness. Oh my god! Like I thought a bomb went off inside the pipe, almost oh. ripped the rod out of my daughter's hands. It was insane, and she was so pumped. She's like, "Daddy, I got hit by a huge snook." I was like, "Yes, you did." <laughs> Oh god, dude, and, that, and it's scary too at the same time because when my son hooked up on his first hundred pound tarpon, it drug him from the back of the boat to the front of my skiff, <laughs> and I like barely grabbed my hand on it on his belt to hold him, and then the, then the rod started singing. So yeah, when he first hooked oh up, god, he was getting skipped across the boat. And I'm like, oh, dude, and that rod that she was on was a pretty stout rod. If that had hooked up, oh, she would have been in the she water. She probably would have been in the water. <laughs> <laughs> That's all this time. He's like, dude, when we fish with these rods and let the kids hold it, we have to tie leashes to our children. Yeah, yep. And the rod. So there's and two the of them, you know. So if they let go of the rod, we're, you know, we're tied up. Well, what I did child. is, like, she was sitting in front of me, like, crisscross applesauce, and I put my leg, uh, like, in between her crisscross, like, you know, her leg. Yeah, the diamond. Right? Yeah, I put my leg there just in case I got to, like, stop her it'll stop her long enough that i could grab her before she falls in <laughs> you know oh but she was loving it and it was awesome that's so funny but my, my kid would be like if he got pulled in you'd see him at the bottom of the lake still reeling like this holding his breath right i got it not like you know, i feel <laughs> like my daughter would do that too she's just getting into it but she's learning so fast yeah, it's, it's good, awesome man. the kids love it once they you know logan got his his win on the the knr tackle second place when he was done he was He's like, Dad, I want four rods. He's like, I'm the best to ever do it. He's got more rods than I got. <laughs> Stupid. Well, now I, now I don't have many rods because because I lost it. Like it a situation. Dumbass. We got a situation. Guys, just to be clear, nobody stole my rod. I put it on the side rail of the bed of my truck, and I did forgot to take it. I was taking a video of it because someone wanted to see my rod because they were interested in buying one through Snooksnacks. So I'm taking a video of it. I go in the gas station. I buy my shit. 
and I come out and I, I didn't put it back in the bed and I drove away and it must have just rolled off and then somebody driving by went hey that looks expensive oh yeah I'll, I'll take, take that I'll right take that there. so I should probably check the pawn shops you know the pawn shops wouldn't even know what they got I know they wouldn't they wouldn't give nearly enough for that yeah. that might be good for me though if I can go get it back for a hundred bucks <laughs> I'll buy it for a hundred dollars I'll, I'll gladly pay a hundred bucks to get that set up back <laughs> I'd gladly pay a hundred bucks. If you have it, please hit me up. Here they come. Yeah, Watch and this. Go away! <laughs> <laughs> and then they're all go. That's so funny. Speaking of uh, speaking of getting hit in that pipe and not hooking up, I have been in the worst funk lately. I have had, uh, I have had been too, so man. many snook, dude. It has. It's been like that. And I think it's, you know, we got a little bit of different flow going on in the canal right now. And you, you saw it when I was I pointed it out in the morning. It's like in my backyard, I could tell you basically what's going on in Griffin Road, just from seeing how my backyard flows. And like if it's going one way, I'm like, yeah, it's going to be great fishing. If it's coming back the other way, it's like it's not that great. And you've seen it; it was going. We went, and it was, the flow was going one direction when we were coming back. The water raised three inches because you couldn't get underneath the bridge. Dude, I would honestly say it was more than three inches. Three because, four or five. Because I measured. Because there's this like really low bridge that we creep under, and I have to adjust my uh, my trolling motor to get yeah. under there. I have a long shaft, 70 pound thrust trolling motor, and I had to put it down about six inches to get under there. The water raised like significantly. Yeah, and that's how fast things can change, you know, in these little small canals. And that was one big thing I was telling about, like, oh, they burped the canal. He's like, what does that mean? I'm like, well, the flow goes this way, and then out of nowhere, like an hour or two later, it'll it'll back charge through the canal again. And that's what happened. We were we were going out. The the flow was going one way. We made it all underneath the bridge, no problem. We turned around like 45 minutes later, maybe yeah. that, maybe an hour, and the water rose that high and the flow was going back another direction. So I think that has something to play with, with these fish, you know, and their locations. Oh, and no doubt. That has a ton to do with it. If you guys think of it as like a, think of it as almost like a tsunami, you know, when this uh, earthquake, a surge. A surge, an earthquake happens underwater and all the water starts going one direction. When the pump is on, all the water is going one direction. Then when that pump shuts off, it keeps going and then it pushes back and then you get this like sloshing yeah, like of the entire body, canal and then you know any holding pattern that the fish were in at that point is like pff, null and just, void just jacks them up right yeah. there so i think that's why if everybody anybody that's out there fishing right now the, the, the system they're having a hard time i think that might be part of the problem here we go <laughs> can we help you contestant number one anyway um <laughs> Go, honey, can you go outside, please, until we're done? Oh, she got to recharge. She's chugging, that, <laughs> chugging that Gatorade. Close the door, baby. Okay. All right. Um, if you've ever like, I don't know if you've ever had this happen, but you come to a spot in the canal or, or whatever, and you the you can tell the water's moving, and you can't tell what direction it's going. It's just kind of, it's just kind of turbulent. That means that the canal right there at that point is like in flux. It's either the pump just shut off. Or something, another pump just came what on. What he's saying is, like, when you see the flow come out, and it's just, like, coming straight out of it, and, like, banking off, and just swirling on both sides. Not one's making a, an exact boil point. It's just, like, rebounding off the bank. Yeah, no, but I'm, even that, and, like, when there's just no... You can literally, like, you'll see spots where you can tell the water is, like, circulating. Mm -hmm. Not even out of a pipe or anything. But it's not really going anywhere. Because it, the canal is in one of those transition points from... Whether it be an easterly flow or on Griffin, we can have it flowing east or west because we have a pump in Port Everglades, or not Port Everglades, we have a pump in Holiday Park in Holiday the Everglades, Park, yeah. and then we have one on 441 that leads right out to uh, Port Port Everglades. Well, another situation we were just talking about with that is, you know, we get a lot of wind flow too, and trying to read these canals with the wind flow on top will give you a little bit of a misreading too as well. Dude, I was out on Griffin a couple days ago on my on my paddleboard, and I had, the current was going strong one way, and the wind was going strong the other way, and I just sat there, still, but with the current, the water's like ripping yeah. by me, and I wasn't moving because the wind was pushing me the other way. It was the weirdest thing, but it put me in the perfect spot. There was yeah, an eddy on both sides, and I was like, God was just, telling you, just, like, just, just I got you, bro. Don't fish, worry about fish it. that spot. On. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and in that same, not that same spot, but that same canal system. I got drilled by a monster. I was, again, I was trolling the glide. I was trolling, I don't have one here, but I was trolling a hitch. Oh, where, where's the, the little, hitch. where's the baby? 
I was trolling ones. this color in the canal. But the big one. And I posted a video of it, <clears throat> and I'm holding my rod in my right hand, working the trolling you motor. See go, you see the rod go. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Delayed Reactions over here. And I don't know how I missed it. I don't know how I missed the one in the pipe. And then I got two other hits in that same pipe. Just I was just going back and forth, because I know they're in there. Well, we got those kamikaze peacocks, too, though. I think one of them was a peacock, but two of them were distinctly snook. Mm -hmm. Like when a snook hits, you know. Oh yeah, it's a definitely a distinctive thump. It's a different feeling. Yeah, yeah. It's not a rip and run. It's a wham. <laughs> <laughs> like they're trying to. Your whole rock is. <laughs> they're trying to kill the bait before it even oh, gets yeah. all the way in their mouth. You know what yeah. I mean? They try to make sure they don't have to chew it. They just <laughs> right in the gut. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um. So I don't know. I've been in that little funk and it's killing me. And I. It, you know, it goes in peaks and valleys. You won't catch shit for like however long, for like a month, and then all of a sudden you're on fire and you're like, oh, I'm God's gift to fishing. You're cranking out YouTube videos. You're fucking posting on Instagram every day. And all of a sudden, a flat line. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you guys know, when you see me post a picture of me on my paddleboard, it's because I ain't catching no fucking fish. <laughs> if I start posting paddleboard pics, it's because I ain't catching fish. <laughs> So, That's now funny. cowboy insider secret right yeah, there. Uh, he's been exposed. Man. <laughs> Please call me out next time you see me post a battle board. Be like, damn, you how you how you do it? Like check on me because that that's. <laughs> For me, that's a call for help. That's, yeah, like, that's a call of homie mode right there, bro. <laughs> help a brother out, man. Call See if brother. I'm okay. So, hey, take on fishing or something. Do something. Or bring oh, in this same stretch of my funk, I jumped a tarpon, like a 30, 40 pound tarpon on the hitch glide swimmer. He smacked it. I said hook. He goes flying. Lure goes flying. You both I, said hey. I start, I yeah, <laughs> I start crying. Like, it was bad, dude. I was, I was oh my God. It's like, what's up, brother? Uh, I was so upset. That's cool. Um, you know what's funny is uh, I have the glide swimmers have gotten wrecked by some tarpon, no doubt about it. They definitely will, sure. will break. But I have one, an eight inch chartreuse glide swimmer that has been through hell. It has survived. I have. Monsters. It's been in the mouth of a hundred and twenty pound tarpon. It's been in the mouth of a ginormous snook. I caught. One. I caught a barracuda on it, and I banged it into several bridge pillars, and that motherfucker is. Going. It's one of a kind. It's, can't dude, lose I'm that telling guy. you, I ain't never losing that lure. If, if it breaks, <laughs> I'm sending it back to Savage Gear to fix it. Yeah, like, glue it back, bro. <laughs> Frankenstein it. We'll glue it and we'll throw jig skins on top so it seals in. You know what we didn't say at the beginning of this, which is why everybody's watching right now? What's that? Is that we are going to announce the winner of the Snook Snacks giveaway uh, in this video. Who cares about the giveaways? Man? No one cares about giveaways, right? Yeah, we, we just want to catch fish. Um, uh, everybody loves the fucking giveaways, man. With freeloaders. So we really appreciate everybody who's entered in the giveaway. Um, we had like one thousand two hundred and sixty something. What over, was up there, man? Over twelve hundred comments. Uh, we got like four hundred new followers. A lot of we got a bunch of orders coming in. So we really appreciate all the support, guys. Awesome, we're guys. we're just getting Snook Snack started. We got some stickers made. So if you place an order soon, you'll get one of these. Um, our winner. Should we, should we announce him now, or should we? Should we? I mean, might as well. You're in, you're in the giveaway. You know what I just or realized? I have the video of him in my phone, which is recording right now. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so how is that going to work? You know what? Should I look him up? Wait, you know yeah. what? No, 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 no. You know what? We're going to say... Uh, we're going to say... And the winner is... And then I'll I'll clip it into the video. We'll do a little clip. It's funny because we gotta put in a little clip of fishing. Right? What what happened with this, this kid was he reposted one of my posts after the giveaway period, the entry period ended, and then he said on his story, he said one more time just for good luck. And then five minutes later, I went into the the a random Instagram comment generator, a comment picker, and it picked him. And I was like, bro, you spoke it into existence. I forgot your name right now, but I am going to put it into we the video afterwards. Bro, you spoke it into existence. Congratulations. You you're, made it happen yourself. Bro. You're about to get the baby bass glide swimmer, a couple of RTF mullets. What else we got? He's going to get a loose, a loose, loose body, body mullet. He's going to get a ooh, baby glide swimmer. This one's ooh, juicy. Ooh. Change the hooks. Oh, I'm sorry. Baby shine glider. Change your hooks. Change your hooks. And he's getting a baby glide swimmer. Change your hooks again. Change the hooks. So all this right here is yours, bro. I forgot what his I forgot his name, but the second part of his name is C like cousin. It's like C U H H H H H H H H H. 
So every time he me- every time he messages the page, I think he's saying, "Yo, what up, cuh? Yeah, well, you want to is- you want the giveaway, cuh? You want cuh? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. You want to talk about some of this new shit we got here? What we got new over here, man? Show him, man. Bring it over. What we got? Here's a couple thing things. Uh oh. What size is this one? That's the eight inch. That's this my. That's the eight inch. That's my baby. Oh, the red horse sucker, right? Man, talk about a canal killer right there, bro. Anybody fishing those golds? Man, that's the lure to have right there. And I tell you what, I think the little bit smaller one. You need beer? I need a, yeah, I, I need got, one of those filters. Talk about I'm, it, Spence. I'm, Talk about I'm it. I'm digging the one size smaller. What size is that? The, the five inch? You want to see a seven? Uh, the, the smaller seven, is six and a half. The six and a half. That one and the golden shiner. You know what? I actually just sold the last red horse today. Did no, you? I got the red horse. I sold the last golden shiner. Well, I think these goldies right here, here. and this size. Right there. See, just a little bit difference. No, it's a lot of difference. I think that right there is definitely going to turn them on. So I've had a lot of hits on these smaller ones, but I had a lot more committed hits on the slightly bigger lures, to tell you the truth. Yeah, it's kind of that sweet spot where it's not so small that they don't have to hit it hard, and it's not so big that they're not scared. Yeah, and it gives them the trigger to, like, yeah, that's a bigger bait. You know, I could slap this one, get more energy, you know, instead of wasting my time on scooping up a bunch of little yeah, ones. Yeah, it's like a guaranteed meal. It's like, yeah. man, that's just that sweet spot right there. And you can see the difference between a smaller one and that. So, and then let me hold up this one. So those are your three sizes. So I think this middle one right here, that's going to be the money maker. Unless you're me, then you just go 8 inch all the way. Well, we just throw big stuff all day long. And guys, we got the, uh, the Golden Shiner 8 inch. Because the Golden Shiner has been so popular, we got it in all the smaller colors and it sold out like right away. So for my guys that like to throw the big baits, uh, I got it in a Golden Shiner, so we've got a couple of these for you. We also have your baby, the Shine Glider. Look look how like look sandy that is. Dang. The Golden Shiner, uh, Shine Glider 7 inch, and then and the Chartreuse. We also got it in the, in the small one, so get your smalls. Yeah, and then we got our Chartreuse. I'm loving these. I'm all about things, that color on it. Just bling. I'm all about the Chartreuse, man. I'm digging that stuff. So new stuff in. You want to show them the ridiculous thing you got, or you were saving that for another podcast? Oh, I was saving another it, podcast. but I'll show you guys. Pre- preview it. Preview, preview. it. This deep. <laughs> That's a lethal weapon. This is an offshore lure, guys. You can this kill not, someone this with is that. not for you inshore guys. Don't throw that in the it, canal. Don't do it. it. It dives down 30 feet, and you control it up to what nine knots. I think nine knots. Nine yeah. knots? Fast. So this is for you offshore guys, you know, a couple of guys out there. Throw this back there. You're going to get a lot of tunas, you know, wahoos, kingfish, you know, maybe that mac daddy mahi floating around. But I'm definitely going to have some trials coming up in the next week Can't wait with to this see it, and see what happens. So I definitely think it's going to be a winner. We have these two. We have them multiple colors. Oh, you know what the kid's name is? Delfino. Delfino, Delfino! You're the winner, bro. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how everything comes. How did it really? come to me like that? <laughs> My brain's fucked. From like eight, from like 18 years old to 22 is a blank spot. Oh, so. yeah, there's, there's a memory loss on that. So my brain is it's a little glitchy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! What was the other thing we said we were going to talk about? I know we said, we wanted to keep this one short because I know most of you guys just want to know who the winner is. It's yeah, Delfino. Delfino. Is he like a West Coast guy? Isn't that a West Coast? No, not no, West Coast, Florida, like California. Yeah, I was going to say, that's like some California what up, shit. Cud? They're definitely not South Florida, bro. I'll tell you that. Dude's much. out here cripping on some snook, like, hey, hey what, what up, cuz? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to see walk right up on him. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, oh, you know what was one of the biggest things people asked me after the first podcast? Because we did a 32 minute podcast and talked nothing but glide baits. And people still message me like, can you talk about technique? Can you talk? Like, I thought we covered everything. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, but <laughs> we'd had a few drinks. Yeah, I remember. We had some Don Julio that day, oh, too. The, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, we busted out the 42, remember? Oh. It's still there. You want some? Should we? <laughs> um, we'll we'll wanted, talk about that later. <laughs> people wanted to talk technique. And I don't know. For me, I feel like it's a whole other podcast. But, uh, cause I could, I could talk about it all day. Yeah. It's that, that just boggles my mind when you say technique it really does. Why? Cause you think it's more of a, a point and shoot just really not, that type of no, thing? Or? Not at all. It's, you know, there's, 
you know, everybody's, oh, 65 five pound, five, five pound braid and then like 80 pound leader and all that. When I fix the canals, sometimes I'll, I'll back it down to like 40, 50. Yeah, yeah. You know, give them a little lighter presentation, slow it down a little bit, you know. There's a lot to do. That's why you said when it, it, it's a full podcast. Yeah, it's a full podcast. It is. For sure. I, but I think, I think I can throw a couple of pointers out there. For one, if you're doing, all right, I'll break it down into like three sections. Search tasks, medium range fishing, and then targeted fishing when the fish is right in front of you. Search casting, just go ahead and make long casts and reel it at a slow to moderate speed. You do not want to reel these fast because what happens is you'll start at a moderate speed. I want you to see the profile. It'll be, it'll stay straight and it'll just go side to side. You start reeling faster and it starts going. It yeah, gets, you'll see the lure dip. It dips and turns. And it, and, and it shortens up that, that span that it's trying to whip. And right. You want that whip. You, you want, want that, it to go That way, long, that, seductive turn. Right. And that's where you're going to get but on your on, on your long cast, and when I say search cast, what these lures are great for, and what I was reading up a lot on, I was reading about it on like the bass tournament guys are adopting this. They'll go out before the tournament starts with one of these or any glide bait. And they'll throw it because it will attract any fish in the area. They oh, might, yeah. they might not hit it, but just this thing going down the canal, you're this gonna see, you're gonna see wakes coming out. off yeah. the bank to go. What the hell is that? Yeah. So that's your search cast. Your search casting to find out what's in the area, right? So maybe if they're not hitting glides, if you throw this, you're gonna get fish to come out that otherwise draw them out. they weren't gonna look at your other lures, and then you know where they are, and you can toss whatever on them. For sure, you're definitely gonna get some eyes looking at you with that. And you can see it with my canal. When I go down a certain river, it's real small, you'll see them. Yeah. Try to size it up, and you'll see like two mm -hmm. wakes come out from either side, and they're like, oh. Yeah. Every now and then you get that one that you didn't even know was looking, and he's 100% commitment, and boom. boom. And, and you, you don't gotta, see him coming. That's the he's one coming you, from below. That's he's the one you gotta up. be ready for. On that uppercut hit. All right, so that's the long range search cast. The mid range, what I do is once I can see my bait in the water, I go to a crank, crank, yes, crank, definitely. Because you're again, you want now you want the lure to stay straight up and down, so you don't crank it too hard. It's more of a soft. Well, you crank, feel feel your crank. bait, feel your bait when it makes that. You'll, you'll feel, feel it, it turn, go to doom, and then it'll, uh, you'll have a slack point. And that's when you crank again. So when it, it's going to glide, it's going to crank and it's going to glide off, and it's going to kind of slow. And yes. that's when you crank it again, and it's going to. And go, you want it to make big, long. Whoosh. Yeah, so it just goes pause, boom, whoosh, and it'll pause, stop and whoosh, boom. right? You're like showing that ass off. And then you have your targeted cast. If I'm if I'm standing on a ledge and there's a pipe right there, and I know there's always a snook in that pipe, I'm gonna pitch it like you're pitching for bass and some grass, right? Mm -hmm. Bass and grass. Bass and grass. And bass I'm, and grass. I'm gonna work it so that it comes right in front of that pipe, and if I gotta slow it or twitch it yeah, or gonna, whatever, you're gonna put a show on for you're gonna Ooh. right. You're gonna do it in a targeted area with a specific retrieve trying to entice a strike. So that's just a really quick rundown kind of is how I can say it summarily without That's the basics to get yeah. you started, like for real. Like, like you know, unless you're 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 fishing like you know the fish are liking it really fast that day. Like you fished other things that's that true. day yeah. and you're like, oh wait, they're on a, a fast retrieve. Smoke it across the top. Mm -hmm. But the thing is it's gonna come up and pancake. It's gonna it's gonna start skipping. So you're gonna find that, that happy median where you can keep it just digging and you can see the V from the lure working right I've had top. that happen. I was yeah. trolling it one day in my neighborhood out by that 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 corner when we get down and we finally make the turn. Oh yeah, the big corner, yeah. The big corner. And nothing was hitting it. So I went to reel it in and I was like boom. Bye. Got smacked and I was like, oh, that's how you want it. <laughs> okay. So then guess guess what I did the rest of the day? Smoking it across the top. You so, sometimes you got to adjust fire, but for the most part, you can pretty much do the long range, medium range, and then targeted type of cast that mm -hmm. I was just talking about. And you can find out, you know, you can find out that speed real quick and see what's going on. That's true. You know, you can figure that out pretty pretty fast. Well, regardless, you know what I think a big mistake people make with any bait, any bait, is they go to their spot, they make one or two casts, and they do the same cast. They cast in the same spot, they reel at the same speed at the same depth. Mm -hmm. You should be casting to every spot like four times. One retrieve is on the surface, one is two or three or four feet down, one Count is to ten, four or five, let it, let it sink down, and you gotta work and then you gotta try a couple different speeds. You could probably make ten different casts at the same exact spot. Yeah. And one of them is gonna trigger a strike. I mean, like the one that we caught on the side of the road. 
It was sitting on the bottom of the floor. That's so random, bro. <laughs> That's still gonna be one of the funniest stories. Man. Oh my god! It's like so you just don't ever know like what's going on unless you dial in. Hey, but like we're Spencer doing said, let it sink. If you got if you go watch videos of California bass guys that are that fish the big live baits out there, um, you'll see them cast it, and then they'll just stand there, drink a beer, take a yeah, take a sip, check your text messages, throw in a dip. All right. And after about 10, 12 seconds, they'll start well, reeling. That's where it's at, man. You got to figure out the water column that the fish are feeding yeah, in for that, per- lazy that particular that. time and of day. And if you know snook fishing, those fish are lazy, man. Lazy as hell. Lazy as hell. They're like, oh, that, that shit looks oh. good, but, you know, I'm not going to go there. But if it was just another little bit. <laughs> you want to hear something like... funny, dude? I was fishing at the 441 spillway, like, oh, maybe a week or two ago. And uh, I met up with Josue. Josue, shout out to you, bro. He's, Josue? He's, he's already ordered from Slick Snacks a couple times. And I really, awesome, man. Really Dude, appreciate, man. You, appreciate you, bro. That. And uh, I was waiting for him to sell him a couple baits. And this guy had a bucket of, like, half-dead finger mullets. They were all, like, this big. It was, like, eight of them. And he threw them back in the water. And they're there just, like, twitching, twitching like, on the surface, and shit. barely alive. And this monster snook had to be a 40, probably right in the 39 to 40 range. He came up and it would just turn on its side and go. Oh. Okay, fine, I'll eat. You. Almost as if like yeah, like he didn't want to eat the mullet, and it was the laziest thing I've ever seen. It was just like, oh, uh, it's, oh, oh well, oh. since you got him out, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what? It's hard out there for these snook man, especially in in Griffin Road and, and heavily pressured spots like that. They're they're so uh, beat up that if they can get an easy meal, I guess they just got to take it. Yeah, you know? well, yeah. Rarely do you get a snook in those spots to, like, hammer your lure. Yeah. You know? I get more of that in the backyard than on Griffin Road. Yep. Griffin Road, it's more like, eh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they kind of, like, and come then, up and kiss it. Caught some lazy ones out there, too. Oh, uh, yeah. You hook a 40, and it's just like, he's like, oh, you got me. Oh, fuck. Belly up. <laughs> <laughs> then you get the ones that are ready to go. They're like, oh, I wasn't too hungry, but that looks good. I've had a couple. And I've had a couple you, of those, and you're like, man. damn. I had one that I caught. I'm not going to reveal this spot, and it was a uh, it was a 38. But when I tell you it was every bit of like 18, 19 pounds, it was a fat 38. And he would just would not chill. You know how with, <laughs> you know how with tarpon every time you get them close and you touch leader, they're gone. Oh yeah, it was like that. It's like tag your hit. And I was fishing on my Alexa with 65 pound braid, and I every time I'd get close to the leader. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, dude, you gotta you gotta relax. You're doing too much. Like, can you just? Come in right now. Like, so you get, you I'm gonna take a face. picture, get the hook out your mouth, and then we go our separate yeah, ways. Man, like that's it. We're good. We're buddies now. Oh and shit! I can release you. That shit's funny. Well, what do you think, man? You want to wrap it up? I know we said we we're gonna keep it short and sweet. Yeah, let's wrap it up, man. But I gotta do. I got two plugs I want to shout out to. I shout out to Cool Seltzer. You guys, awesome drinks. Everybody's on these seltzers right now. Cooler's got them out, but these are seltzer with a mission, man. Every K spot. Cleans 500 gallons of river water. Check that out. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. And on top of this, my good friend Captain Vickers in Tampa is doing a giveaway. If you text Coors to 59925, you have a chance to enter a win uh, guided tour fishing with Captain Jeff Vickers. In Tampa. In Tampa. So go ahead and plug that in. I know you guys are watching. Bust out your phone and text away. Another one. That's Look, it. All you literally all you have to do is text that code, and that's it. That's it. All you gotta do is text it, man, and you're you're registered to win a trip with Captain Vickers, the uh, triple king, the triple uh, tail king over there in Tampa. Another one. Hook three hundred and sixty. Since we're on, you know, helping the water system, it's another company that's out there helping with conservation. And everything, man. Go ahead and check them out. Every purchase and a percentage goes to conservation. Everything is shipped and recycles goods too, as well. So, you got that going for us. Other than that, do you have any plugs? Uh, Snooksnacks.com. Besides Snooksnacks. And uh, to the, all the guys that I asked for banners, we still waiting, bro. We asked, uh, I talked to Hell Yeah Brother. Where are banners at, man? Come well, on. Let's get, some, let's get a it, banner man. for right there. Uh, no live bait needed. And not only that, but I'm, I'm trying to get some of their, their uh, lures on my site. So, Jose, holler at me, bro. Holla, holla, holla. And uh, Savage Gear, I put my little tiny thing up there because that's all I Oh, 
I didn't even see that. So we trying to get <laughs> we trying to get That's some banners. Cute, man. But guys, thank you for watching. Congratulations to Delfino Cuz. And uh, make sure you guys check out snooksnacks.com. All the lures that we just showed you today, you can buy there. They will ship to you. Local shipping is generally gets there the next day. Like if you place an order in the morning, you're going to get it the next day. If you place it at night, you're going to get it in two days. So really quick shipping um, from me to you. This is a, a homegrown thing, man. This is just me and Spencer selling these baits. Ain't nobody sponsoring us. Ain't no backing. This nope. is me and him that just said, you know what? People want to use these lures. We use them. We like them. We're going to help get them into the hands of other people. So uh, if you guys want to support your locals and you know the guys that are out there, boots on ground with you, fishing in the same spots and uh, support the community, we'd really appreciate it. Snookstacks.com, Savage Forward Podcast, Canal Cowboy, Uncle B, and we'll see you guys later. <laughs>